just take a minute and at least do some kind of lecture on joins. We're going to be writing joins all throughout the course. And if you haven't written that many of them, you're going to see a ton of patterns over and over and over again. But I just wanted to clear the deck and try to help you avoid some confusion if you're using my course in addition to other tutorials out there. Um, for the purposes of, of BI, data analytics, data science, I'll tell you right now, if you look at this, this uh, diagram of all these different joints, really the only thing you're ever going to use is um, the left join and the inner join. It really, I mean, <sighs> I'm not going to say you'll never use anything else because you'll probably use unions once in a while and maybe we'll do some examples of unions at the end of the course and, and why you might use them. But really just focus on mastering the left join and the inner join. And I just want to, I, I have actually lots of examples all throughout the course of the difference between the left and the inner join just so it really gets cemented into your head and, and, and how to approach things if you're not completely sure of the data model. Let's just do some random stuff though. Um, so I set up this random data and let's just take a look at it really quick. So I have a random series, well, it was not random, it's just generate series one through 10. I have 10 columns. Um, I'm sorry, I have 10 rows. I'm going from one through 10. And now I'm, I'm gonna do a left join on this to a, uh, a series I'm calling set. So I'm just going to say, you know, set.set, .set, and I'm joining on val.val equals set.set. .set. You'll see what I mean. So the left join does essentially what this diagram describes. It keeps everything on the left side of the join, my val data, and it returns any matches it finds from the right side of the table. So in this case, I have 1 through 10 on the left side. And on the right side, I'm generating 5 through 15. So, you know, I have no matches here for 1 through 4. I do have matches 5 through 10. And I totally ignore 11 through 15. So, again, this is the danger of um, sometimes not using the right join. You might really want this data 11 through 15, but you just don't know about it. Maybe you should have started from that table and joined onto the other table. Um, let me show you a right join though, and let's talk it through before we even do it. So the right join, uh, you can see it up here, and again, you hardly ever use it, but just for the sake of illustration, it keeps everything on the right and everything it finds in common. So let's just run the code. And here we go. So it's primarily going to be concerned be concerned with what's on the right, hence right join, and that is the generate series 5 through 15. And whatever it finds from the left side of the join, meaning uh, what you joined it to, and this is kind of a weird concept. This is why you hardly ever see people using right joins unless it's some esoteric query optimization on really large systems. Um, it's kind of hard to get your head around, but you can see that the right side was 5 through 15, it returned the intersection of the matches, which was 5 through 10, but it did ignore the fact that we had uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4 on the left side. So again, uh, really just basics. We'll cover the basics again and again and again, and you'll really get a good understanding of, um, of left joins versus inner joins. And let's just do an inner join right here. Just get rid of the word right or left, and it will do an inner join and that just returns values that are on both sides. So again, just want to emphasize, um, usually as a rule of thumb, start off with left joins, check nulls from the right side to understand your data. Um, inner joins, only when you are sure of, sure that uh, you understand both sides to avoid data loss. And what's a good example of that? You could have, you know, let's say you have a, a table on the left side that has data for customers and on the right side you have attributes about those customers. Uh, if your attribute table doesn't have all the customers, if you do an inner join, you're gonna miss some of the customers that were on the left side. So you might shoot yourself in the foot, so to speak. 
Um, so yeah, inner joins, left joins, be careful if you just use the word join, that's implicitly an inner join. And uh, we'll keep hitting this topic over and over, but I'd be remiss if I didn't walk you through the basics here. But I also want to say, don't be afraid of full outer joins, of full outer joins uh, where the key is null. Again, it's not going to matter. Just focus on the 80-20 or the 90-10 of this stuff and you'll be just fine.